Now, before I get into what I'm about to get into, I just want to make sure that each and every last one of y'all hit that like or dislike button. Don't forget to put some Coach K Duke full court pressure on that sub button if you're new to my channel. And please be sure to ring that noti bell so you can be notified via email each and every time your boy E Thriller, aka Ham Rothstein, aka Goat Thriller, aka the Black Picasso, because I paint these pictures so vividly with my words on the sport of boxing. Whenever I feel like it. And once again, fight fans, ladies and gentlemen in the Wolf Pack, welcome back. Now, Teofimo Lopez, the nerve of you, egotistical, narcissistic, delusional, disloyal, pompous, fucking little smuck. For you to come out and other the words that came out of your mouth the other day in that little fucking interview that you did with whoever the case may be. For you to come out and shit on the great Bob Arum, the great Timothy Bradley, and the great Andre Ward, and on top of it all, using racial slurs towards black fighters just because you feel like top rank isn't giving you the shine that they once gave you, and for good reason. But if you haven't heard what Teofimo Lopez, the little fucking prick, this little fucking smuck, had to say about ESPN, DJ E Thriller, roll that clip. At the fighters meeting, I dissed Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley yeah. in front of ESPN production and all of them for all their affiliation and corruption that they do. Yeah. And what happened? I put more weight on my back and all they were talking about right away when I slipped in the first, with the first lockdown they called, I slipped, they called it right away with the Bradley said, he hurt, he hurt. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I don't, I don't sugarcoat shit. All these motherfuckers dick ride and they suck dick. Sorry for my language. No, no, no. But that is the problem. I don't ride off that. Yeah. And and just to even put it more on the spike, this is my last fight on ESPN. Oh. Ooh. Bitch. Because, Ooh. because this is I no longer, know. no. This is no longer, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I mean, nobody else this is man. why this fight yeah, means everything to me. Yeah. If they want the black fighters, they could keep them. I brought Bud Light Ooh, to top yeah. rank. You see, Teofimo Lopez is caught up in this delusional state of thinking that he's the same guy. Teo, I don't know if you noticed or not, my brother, but you got your ass kicked by George Cambosis. And the last time I checked, your last two performances were not that impressive. So I guess that's why he took exception to whatever Timothy Bradley, who can be brutally harsh with his constructive criticism of fighters. He's done it to several black fighters in the past, and I will have some examples for you here shortly. Anna Andre Ward, two Hall of Famers who has the right to criticize and critique your performances if they are lackluster or if they're phenomenal. They don't hold, they don't sugarcoat shit. They don't hold back whether you're a black fighter, Hispanic fighter, Latino, Asian, Filipino. It doesn't fucking matter whenever it comes to Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward. So I don't even know why you're taking shots at them, brothers. And I'm going to be honest with you. ESPN does not have any preferential treatment towards black fighters. Hell, I can make a strong case that they were pushing you more than they were pushing a Terrence Bud Crawford. Faxy thriller. But if you haven't heard some of the criticism that a Timothy Bradley and an Andre Ward had for a Teofimo Lopez after his last fight with Sandor Martin, well, let's listen to what they had to say. DJ E Thriller, roll that clip. The game is not even sentimental, man. I keep telling people, people like, uh, it's not and yes, it is. It's not even sentimental, bro. And when you're not mentally, when you're not mentally stable, bro, and, and you fight those demons, you literally have to talk to yourself over and over and over. And if you don't have people around you to keep control of that and help you, help you manage that, bro, it's gonna be a problem. I said before the fight, I said, man, I, I speaking to this guy in the fighter meeting. I don't know who the hell I was speaking to. I have no clue who I was speaking. I was like, who is this kid? Like. I've been following this kid, and I've been working this fight for the last three and a half years. I'm like, this is a completely different person. I mean, all over the place. You know, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you what he said or what. I'm not gonna get into all that. But I can just tell that something's not right, man. And I'm like, yo, the battle's not with Martin tonight. The battle's with himself. I knew something was off. So he's either gonna look spectacular tonight, you know, and, and prove me wrong and my thoughts wrong, or he's gonna look terrible tonight, you know. And I thought he looked subpar, subpar tonight. It wasn't a terrible, terrible fight, but it wasn't his best performance. It wasn't what we all used to seeing, you know. I didn't have those type of expectations, but I thought it was going to be 
a little easier fight because he's the more superior athlete than a Martin. A few moments later. What's going on? How you doing to your look tonight? He look great. He had some good moments, but you know, Martin, uh, he showed up. And, uh, you know, he performed in a way that, you know, a lot of people didn't expect him to in a close fight. Uh, but but Tio didn't look great. He didn't look great at all. Tio you know, been talking about wanting to fight for Gray if next. He's really, really adamant about that, man. Yeah, um, yeah, pro Gray. How do you kind of do you think that should be next for him, or do you want to see him get a few more fights coming for him? The what, the BC or the IVF? Jack Catterall? Well, nah, not Catterall. WBO is, um, WBO's Ramirez, Jose Ramirez. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but, well, Jose Ramirez is actually, um, next in line to fight for Grayers, and this was, like, a second WBC eliminator. You sure that's the order? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's in line for Catterall and Taylor. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the one that he said he wants to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, any of those fights can be made, but they're probably gonna go the route of the sanctioning box. But it's gonna be hard at home, no matter who he from. And, and Pro Gray is different, but you know it's a reason that a lot of people don't say his name. So it's, it's a re it's a reason why he's, he's overlooked. Uh, it's not because he's a bad fighter. He, he knows who he is. He's a dog. And you know when you sign you sign a fight, Pro Gray, you know what time it is. It's gonna be a long night or a short night if you're not careful. Andre, what could a Teofimo done differently in this fight, you know, facing Sandra Martinez Southpaw? It looked like, you know, Teofimo didn't land a lot of combinations in that yeah, fight. Yeah, just, just waiting around looking for one big shot. He's gifted, man, with, with natural explosiveness and quickness, but he, he's relying on that too much. And uh, didn't use his jab tonight. You know, he would just fall with it, pose, stand in front, and, and just try to load up a big shot. You got a guy that's experienced like Martinez, he'll start to pick up that rhythm and start to counter like he did. So he didn't show the create, creativeness with his offense, the feints, and footwork, he just didn't show, and, and some of that was Teo's fault, and some of that was what Martin did, so. You know, on the, on the outside That's looking, folks, on the outside looking, then those five pass all right, so now that you heard some of the criticism that Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward had to say about Teofimo Lopez, you can kind of see why everything he said about those dudes and the black fighters at ESPN was totally uncalled for. And it was very fucking racist. And I'm going to take it a step further, man. I think the man is salty. I think the man is jealous because he sees ESPN shining light on Shakur. He sees ESPN shining light on Keyshawn Davis. He sees ESPN shining light on Big Baby Anderson. And he's taken aback because his fight against Josh Taylor who holds the WBO strap at 140 pounds, who is the ex-undisputed champion of the world at 140 pounds, he feels like that fight is not getting enough publicity. So this is his way of shining light on himself, whether it's positive or negative, because he's feeling a certain type of way about Bob Arum, who just restructured his deal, just FYI, after he pulled a fucking stunt by going to Triller and going behind Bob Arum's back because he felt like he was supposed to be making way more money against a George Cambosis. And Bob Arum was like, look, man, you're delusional. You have a false sense of your popularity, and you're not on that fucking level yet. So I'm not about to break the bank for a goddamn prospect. You understand what I'm saying? But Teofimo Lopez being the delusional, motherfucking narcissistic, egotistical, fucking smuck, he took it upon himself, him and his father, to go behind his back. And we all know what happened with this situation. Triller end up, ended up tanking, and he ended up back on what? I think that fight went on the zone, and he was praising Eddie Hearn for everything that he done for him. And then after he got his ass kicked, he felt like Eddie Hearn tried to set him up. Oh, he was all set up for Devin Haney and all this other extra shit. So to me, just to me, this man is a fucking idiot. He's a racist. Yeah, I said it. And this man is jealous and salty as fuck. Drop your comments and thoughts below. Make sure you hit that like button. Ring that noti bell. Until next time, I'm gone. Holla.